Perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ladrian Roby, proud superintendent of Grand Rapids Public Schools. I'd like to welcome, on behalf of the Board of Education and our entire district, I'd like to welcome State Superintendent Dr. Michael Rice to Grand Rapids Public Schools and to Union High School. Joining us today are Mike Shouty, Executive Director of the Michigan Education Association, Wendy Winston, our dynamic math teacher from Grand Rapids University Preparatory Academy, who is also the new on the new board of directors for the National Education Association, and Miss Angela DeLuca Placencia, a parent action leader and the parent of three students at North Park Montessori. Thank you all for being here as we uplift our teachers as part of National Teacher Appreciation Week and advocate for Governor Whit Whitmer's proposed school age budget school aid budget, excuse me. If there's ever a time in K-12 history where we need to demonstrate the appreciation for our teachers and our educators, the time is right now. In the face of a global pandemic, historic teacher and staffing shortages, virtual learning, hybrid learning, masking learning, and everything in between, our teachers have demonstrated their dedication, their grit, their passion, their love, resiliency and professionalism by staying focused on our scholars. And for that, we say simply a heartfelt thank you. So on behalf of the Board of Education, our scholars, parents, caregivers, school leaders, support staff, and community partners, I extend thanks and appreciation to all of our GRPS teachers and all of the teachers in the region for this day and all days that you have worked as professional caring scholars. I also want to extend thanks and appreciation to Governor Gretchen Whitmer for the historic K-12 state budget proposal that invests in education and heavily in teachers, support staff, and in schools. Not only is she proposing a historic increase for per pupil funding, but her proposed budget also takes a giant leap forward with student learning funding to meet the needs of our English learners our special education scholars, and at-risk youth. Another historic aspect of Governor Whitmer's proposed budget is a significant investment in retention and recruitment of teachers and support staff. We really need all hands on deck. This is a serious issue in a historic crisis of teacher shortage, particularly true of hard to fill positions such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics our statistics are alarming. Michigan has seen a 71% decline in teachers completing the teacher preparation program since 2006. Michigan ranks dead last in the nation with the largest teacher decline preparation completion. Teacher retirements in Michigan are up 44% since August of 2020. GRPS, our district, currently has more than 60 vacant teaching positions as of today and the number of vacancies has remained consistently high throughout the school year, ranging from 60 up to 110. And to top everything besides that, our sub rate is about 40%. So this is a serious issue. There are reasons why we need a statewide plan to complete the adequate and appropriate funding necessary to uplift the teaching profession, to recruit new teachers, and to retain our existing teachers to ensure that all scholars have the benefit of having an engaged, loving, caring educator in their classroom daily. Now I want to turn it over to Mr. Mike Shouty, Executive Director of the Michigan Education Association. Thank you, um, Dr. Roby, and thank you to the Grand Rapids Public Schools for hosting us today, appreciate it. Uh, again, I'm Mike Shouty. I proudly serve as the Executive Director of the Michigan Education Association. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken the time out today to participate in the roundtables. Especially want to thank the hardworking teachers and education support professionals who shared their stories with the state superintendent and the administrators and board members that attended. Um, and I especially want to recognize the stress and pressure these educators are under nowadays. School employees, students, and parents are carrying an increasingly heavy load. 
Educators have had to deal with a growing staff shortage, COVID, remote learning, an unfair evaluation system, standardized tests, school violence, and so much more. I hear it every single day in my conversations with MEA members. Educators across Michigan are at a breaking point. So many good school employees just can't do it anymore, and fewer young people are going into the profession. This has created a school staff shortage that is only getting worse by the day. For the sake of our kids' future, state leaders must take immediate action to recruit new teachers as well as keep good teachers in the classroom, and we must do it now. This means increasing compensation for all school employees, for both veteran staff and new educators, it means elected officials listening to the voices of educators when they're making decisions about education policy. And it means respecting educators for the professionals that they are. We must tune out the political extremists trying to divide a wedge between parents and educators. Instead, we must all work together to solve the challenges facing our schools. The time for that work is now. One of the most impactful things we can do is urge our lawmakers to set aside partisan politics and pass Governor Whitmer's education budget. Among other priorities, the governor's budget addresses arguably the two biggest issues facing our schools, the educator shortage and student mental health. First, uh, the educator shortage. Our kids can't learn if there aren't enough teachers to teach them, bus drivers to take them to school, custodians to keep the school buildings clean and safe, administrative professionals to keep the offices running, or other support staff so critical to the operation of our schools. The governor's budget will help attract more young people to go into careers in education, as well as provide ret retention incentives to keep great educators on the job. Combined with better compensation and professional respect, these budget proposals can make a real difference a real difference in fixing the educator shortage. Second, the governor's budget will make a huge stride in addressing mental health needs of our students. Our kids have had a challenging couple of years and mental health services are desperately, desperately needed in our schools now more than ever. The governor's budget increases, uh, excuse me, the governor's budget includes major increases in funding for mental health services for students as well as an aggressive plan to attract, retain, and fund more school-based mental health professionals. We must make services available to those who need them most. When all is said and done, Governor Whitmer's education budget would significantly uh, be one of the most transformative investments our schools have seen in decades. Every child, every child, regardless of race, national origin, or how they identify, deserves a quality education and an opportunity for success. And the governor's budget will do just that. So again, I want to thank everyone here today who's shown a commitment to strengthening public education. No single one of us can do this alone. It's going to take the cooperation and hard work of parents, educators, school administrators, state officials, and community leaders to reach our shared goals. We are in this together. So on this Teacher Appreciation Week, together, let's commit to lighting a, brighter, lighting a brighter path for Michigan's next generation. Thank you. Uh, it is now my honor to introduce you to Wendy Winston. Wendy is a proud educator who teaches mathematics at the Grand Rapids University Preparatory Academy. She is an active member in her union, and she was recently elected by the MEA members across the state to serve on the board of directors of the National Education Association representing Michigan. We are so proud. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Shouty. My name is Wendy Winston, and I'm an algebra teacher at Grand Rapids University Preparatory Academy. Um, I've been teaching in public schools for 21 years. About a month ago, a few students requested help addressing student mental health needs. Their goals were to decrease the stigma around talking about mental health struggles. They asked for support in creating a school environment that feels safe and welcoming. We want to help, but we need access to resources and training. 
Our children are living through a pandemic and a time of social upheaval. They are grieving, suffering from loss, trying to be successful in school, and dealing with pressures connected with social media. They are worried, anxious, angry, or just shut down. They feel alone, but they're afraid to let their guard down and build relationships. The toughest part is the adults aren't much better off. Working in public schools these past few years has taken a toll. I don't feel supported by my community or the legislators in Lansing. Many of my colleagues feel the same. School is back to normal, but the reality is this is not normal. Educators are expected to maintain rigorous standards while filling gaps. Adults have coping strategies and support networks, but our young people are still growing into themselves. Their brains are still developing. Lansing needs to step up and recognize that our students deserve serious investment now. Adults, sorry, I already said that. Every child deserves a quality education and an opportunity for success, and the governor's budget will help to do just that. I'm asking our state legislators to set aside partisan politics and work together with the governor to pass her education budget for the sake of our children's future. Michigan schools are understaffed. Working in short-staffed buildings means that teachers don't have adequate time to plan, grade, analyze student achievement data, or connect with parents. It also means that when they take a day off, their coworkers take on additional work and their students miss out. One teacher recently considered not attending a funeral because they couldn't find a substitute teacher for their classroom. These working condition conditions have increased resignations and retirements. Just yesterday, a colleague confided that they felt discouraged and underappreciated and were considering leaving the education field altogether. Over the past few years, all public school employees have taken on more than they ever anticipated. Now we need relief, recognition, and support. The governor's budget can make a real difference in solving the educator shortage and helping every student succeed. Her budget plan will help keep good educators in our schools as well as recruit new educators into the profession. These are the reasons why I support Governor Whitmer's budget proposal. Public schools need access to funding specifically for additional mental health professionals, training and resources for staff, and more support for our students. Michigan needs to treat teachers as professionals. We should treat all public employees, public school employees with respect and compensate them for their expertise and the role they play in educating the future citizens of Michigan. And I'm pleased to announce or introduce GRPS parent, Angela DeLuca Placencia. She's a parent action leader and mother of three students <coughs> who attend North Park Montessori. Thank you. Yes, uh, so at our school in the last year, there has been a no noticeable shortage in teachers, support staff, and substitute teachers. We have one administrative assistant for our two buildings, North Park, which we also call Big North Park, and Wellerwood Early Childhood Center, which is nicknamed Little North Park. And our administrative assistant is currently doing the work of at least three people. Our assistant principal spent weeks in the classroom when teachers needed a sub, and our principal had to cover both leadership roles. Or when teachers needed substitutes, quite often their class was redistributed into the other existing classrooms. Our teachers are working hard to meet the educational and mental health needs of their students. Coming from back from the pandemic changed everything. The adjustment has been difficult on teachers and students. Our students are stressed, they, their anxiety is high. This creates difficult learning environments and teaching environments. The governor's proposals to address staffing shortages are exactly what our schools need. Our district needs to have competitive salaries as coffee shops offer $16 an hour and full benefits to their employees. We need to recruit early and to pay our student teachers and other interns um, the work for the work that they do. We had some mental health days in this last December, which I thought were completely necessary. Our teachers needed this time off in order to do their job to the best of their abilities and we need for our students to have great teachers, which we do. Our students also need access to mental health care, and our school is the perfect place to provide this. Our teachers are amazing, and we should do all that we can to keep them in GRPS and entice young people to become teachers for GRPS. 
So this week for Teacher Appreciation Week, I was very proud that our school stepped up and our students on Monday, they brought their teachers a piece of fruit. It was anything that they wanted, apples, bananas, there were a few pineapples. Um, and the PTA brought bagels and coffee for the staff. On Tuesday, our students wrote their teacher a note or drew them a picture depending on their age and ability. Um, and our PTA leadership uh, brought in a massage therapist to give 15 minute chair massages to our teachers. Uh, yesterday, our students brought their teacher a flower, which could be a drawing of a flower, a cut flower, a crafted flower, any kind of flower that they wanted to create. Um, today was bring a new or gently used book for your classroom, and tomorrow um, the students are to wear their teacher's favorite color, and our PTA is going to provide lunch. So we're doing all that we can, and we're glad to see that the governor is, is doing her part as well. We appreciate that. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce State Superintendent Dr. Michael Rice, a teacher himself and a 20-year superintendent, 17 years as a local school district superintendent, and three years as state superintendent. Dr. Rice. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to lift up students, staff, and a budget that supports students and staff members. When I was young, I had many terrific teachers, teachers who encouraged, inspired, and helped make me into a lifelong learner, a teacher, a coach, a mentor, and a superintendent. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do with my life. In spite of the significant challenges that exist today, teachers still have the best opportunity of any career of which I am aware to pour into and have a positive effect on children. And there's nothing really in second place. Last week was Student Appreciation Week. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week. We appreciate best our students and teachers by providing them with the requisite funding and supports that they need to do their jobs. There's no better way to share our appreciation. There's no better way to value our students and staff. I'm here to honor teachers. I just spent time with a group of Union High School teachers support staff and administrators who deserve our praise. Yesterday, I was in the UP in Escanaba to announce first grade teacher Nanette Hansen as the next Michigan Teacher of the Year. She represents all of the great teachers that we have in every part of Michigan, from the UP to the Indiana border, from one Great Lake to the other. She and her colleagues do extraordinary things with children every day some of which outsiders cannot possibly imagine. An added bonus of yesterday's celebration was the recognition that Ms. Nanette Hansen's daughter is studying to become a teacher. Now that is a family plan, grow your own program. <laughs> Governor's Whitmer, Governor Whitmer's budget is a generational budget. It's the most extraordinary budget that most of us have ever seen in public education. Quite frankly, it may be the most extraordinary budget any of us ever see in public education. That budget calls for a 5% increase in foundation allowance, uh, $435 per child. It calls for a raising of categorical funding for five distinct and important groups of young people, economically disadvantaged students, students with disabilities, English learners, career and technical education students, and rural and isolated district students. Her budget would increase school safety funding. Her budget would provide a $1 billion infrastructure modernization fund. Her budget would add $361 million, principal, for children's mental health. And it would add $2.3 billion to address teacher recruitment and staff retention. It is the best school budget that many educators have ever seen, and it has the potential, if adopted in somewhat similarly uh, constructed form, to drive significant improvement in our kids' education. The Senate and House budgets are more obviously works in progress. Both have strengths, both have gaps. Like the Governor's budget, both the Senate and the House budgets include significant 
and appreciated per pupil foundation allowance increases. All three budgets include investments in school safety. We appreciate those as well. Relative to categorical funding, several studies in the last seven years have said the same thing. Different students have different needs, different needs, Superintendent Kaler have different costs, and we should be funding children's needs and not simply the number of children that we have in our schools. So we call these different needs categorical funding. Only the governor's budget of the three include increases in all five of those areas. Economically disadvantaged students, students with disabilities, English learners, career and technical education students, and rural and isolated district students. Only the governor's budget checks all five of those boxes. While both the Senate and House budgets increase funding for students in rural and isolated districts, the Senate fails to increase funding for economically disadvantaged students, students with disabilities, English learners, and CTE students, while the House fails to increase funding for economically disadvantaged students and English learners. Reflect the fact, reflect what that means, Dr. Roby, for a district like Grand Rapids Public Schools. The School Finance Research Collaborative notes the importance of all of these categorical funding areas in an adequate and equitable school funding formula. Neither the Senate nor House budget includes any funding for an infrastructure modernization fund. Remember that the governor's budget includes $1 billion over six years, $170 million approximately a year for six years for infrastructure modernization. Some districts simply don't have the ability to go to their voters and get either a capital millage or a sinking fund passed. It's just straight math. The infrastructure modernization fund would help out these poor tax-based districts, often rural. This is a matter of equity as well. Neither the House nor the Senate substantially increases children's mental health. Executive Director Schaud, you mentioned the importance of children's mental health, critical area before the pandemic, and I think increasingly obviously an important area, Dean, in the midst of and coming out of a pandemic. You knew about it pre-pandemic. People in the community know about it more substantially now that we've gone through two, two plus years of pandemic. It wasn't until the summer of 2018 that the first funding for children's mental health in the State School Aid Act was provided. It's less than four years ago. First dollar State School Aid Act, $30 million. $30 million sounds like a lot of money. But $20 per kid doesn't sound like a lot of money. And they're in fact the same. Last year, the governor and the legislature negotiated an additional non-recurring appropriation of $240 million to provide more nurses, social workers, guidance counselors, and school psychologists in the state. We need to continue to build important mental health supports for our children, not just those with the most profound needs, but for all of our children. Now's the time to go bold on children's mental health and to build out these supports for a generation of our young people. Finally, we appreciate that both the Senate and the House provided some funding for teacher recruitment. The House particularly leaned in to grow your own programs for support staff and students to become teachers, as well as fellowships or scholarships for students currently studying to become teachers, in addition to student teacher stipends. To start, that said, neither the Senate nor the House made significant investments in retention, and neither provided a nickel for retention bonuses, while the governor recognized retention bonuses as an important mechanism for stabilizing the profession at this critical juncture. Michigan needs a K-12 school aid budget that focuses on the unique needs and costs of all of our children, rural, urban, and suburban, strengthens the teaching profession and provides better supports for students and staff. The governor's proposed budget does exactly that. 
And the state legislature needs to craft a budget with similar focus, resources, and intent. The Senate and House are making progress in their budget work. They would do well to review again the governor's budget in the aforementioned areas, a budget that fully supports students and staff in our 835 LEAs across 3,400 schools for 1.4 million public school children in the state. We have the resources and the opportunity in the state right now to make a significant difference for our kids. Such an opportunity will likely not exist again in the foreseeable future. Let's make the most of this moment and bring it home to do something life-changing for this generation of Michigan kids. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to, um, to answer any questions if, uh, if the media have any. And I'm also happy to just go home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'd like to hear more about any plans or ideas for the teacher shortage. What is it all about money? Are there any other ideas? Or how, well, how are you guys going to address that? Sure. Well, well first of all, uh, it's not all about money. But, that, so, but the fact that it's not all about money doesn't mean that it isn't at all about money. It most assuredly is, in fact, about money. When you survey people and ask them why they've left the profession, the first thing they say is money, particularly young teachers. When you survey young people thinking about careers and those that are thinking about education, the thing that makes them most skittish about going into education is money. So that it's not all about money doesn't mean that it isn't at all about money. It most assuredly is substantially about money. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that it's about supports, too. So it's not necessarily simply about compensation for staff members, although it most assuredly is about compensation for staff members. But in addition, it's about supports around staff members that in addition support young people. As you support staff, you support young people as well. And so is there money associated with that? Yeah. Is it solely associated with those supports? It isn't. But it's in part associated with those supports. It's also associated with a sense of efficacy. If you put too many children in my classroom so that I don't feel capable, it doesn't matter if I feel like this is where I, I belong, but if I can't get it done given the conditions, not simply in my classroom, but around my classroom, that leads to me thinking about going elsewhere as well. Teacher voice is important as well. These are people who, in many cases, have the very same, if not greater, education than do their administrators. They have ideas, and to Dr. Roby's language, they need voice, Mike Shoudy's language, they need voice, they need agency, they need to be a part of. And so I think all of those are a piece of it. Some of those can be addressed in a budget, some can. Look, we've underfunded public education for more than two decades in the state. It's not just my opinion, although it very much is my opinion. It's the opinion of many, many people. And it's going to take more than a budget or a couple of budgets to get us back to where we've been. We've underfunded public education for many years. It's going to take years to bring us back. But this budget, more than any budget that I've ever seen, goes a long way to getting us back there. Other questions? Yes. All three of the budgets include an increase to the per pupil, per pupil allotment. They do. Um, but there are school experts who say it isn't enough. Um, they cite uh, school research collaborative analysis from last summer that found the average student cost is over $10,000 per student. Um, I was hoping to get your thoughts on do you feel the three numbers are enough? Could they be higher to uh, continue to support schools? Or what are your thoughts? So, so each of the three per-pupil foundation allowances is a healthy increase. In fact, if you look at the per-pupil foundation allowance increases that we've had over a period of the last couple of decades, you realize that each of these three is very healthy relative to those per-pupil foundation allowance increases over the last two decades. But what isn't there are the categorical increases, the increases for economically disadvantaged students, for students with disabilities, for English learners, career and technical education students. What isn't there are the mental health supports. What isn't there is the infrastructure modernization fund. What isn't there is the money for teacher recruitment and staff retention so critical to address the underfunding that this very same state legislature 
was complicit in over a period of years. The state legislature now needs to rebuild or help rebuild what it underfunded for so many years. So the issue primarily in the budgets before the House and the Senate right now and banging out the ultimate budget that gets uh, passed by the legislature, approved by the governor, the ultimate piece is all, of the, all the elements around the per pupil foundation allowance. I'm not going to quibble with either of the three per pupil foundation allowances. I'll simply say that in the absence of the categorical funding, the school safety funding, the children's mental health funding, the infrastructure modernization funding, and the teacher recruitment and staff retention funding, this is not the budget that we need for Michigan school children. Yes, sir. As you traveled around uh, the state of Michigan and had an up-close look at the different districts in the area, can you speak a little to infrastructure and the need for resources for infrastructure and where this budget may fall short? Sure. I mean, we have, we have, we have school districts in the state that have extraordinarily well-appointed um, uh, buildings. They're, they're, they're beautiful, um, almost shrines in a, in a particular um, fashion. And there are others, um, often, not always, the oldest communities in their areas um, with, with 80, 90, 100-year-old schools. Now, you can have a 100-year-old school that's beautiful, but you've got to have, you've got to, have put money into that over a period of time because buildings require money to keep them up just like just like our bodies require money to to keep them up so the inequity around buildings um, is very very similar to the inequity you you have in terms of addressing kids academic and social and emotional needs within those those buildings and the governor's infrastructure modernization fund is a beginning to addressing some of those inequities. I had a um, colleague who was uh, in the same county that I was who said, look, you can pass bonds, superintendent. I can't. Uh, my tax base won't accommodate that. My citizens won't approve a bond. So um, I, I end up having to replace a roof from my general fund and crowd out other elements. And there are certain things that are foregone completely for my children. My children have the same needs that your children have. I simply can't afford uh, those opportunities because I don't have a bond, I don't have a sinking fund, and I can't wedge it into my general fund. More questions? Can you talk about what is the state of students today in terms of catching up from COVID learning loss? And sure. then also, um, does the budget um, address that? So I think the Every, every, there are 1.4 billion public school children in the state. Some children haven't lost, to your, to your language, um, or, or haven't experienced delayed or disrupted learning, but many have. And, and the fact of the matter is, is the pandemic, not simply within the state, but across the country, has exacerbated a number of the gaps that we had pre-pandemic. Can any budget address um, fully the adverse impact of the pandemic? Absolutely not. Does this budget go a long way to addressing those gaps over a period of years? I believe that it will. Look, teachers can't get it done by themselves in classrooms. They need all sorts of support to work with our young people. What young people come to school with on a daily basis is, is not simply a series of academic needs uh, for which our, our teachers have been trained. There are a whole host of social and emotional and mental health challenges that our young people have that require people trained in those areas. And you can say, well, train up the teachers so that they have greater knowledge. That, that makes sense, and we should do that. But I have 32 kids in my classroom. I'm not going to be a school psychologist at the same time that I'm a, a, a teacher. I may do some of that before school, after school, at lunch, but the reality is that there need to be more humans in this enterprise. There need to be more of us pouring into our young people. So if the question is, can a single budget get this done? No, ma'am. Is the question, is this budget, more than any budget I, that I've seen, capable of moving us um, down the field in, in the ways that we need to support children? Absolutely. Um, other questions? Can't give it away. One more time. 
un peu changé la langue, hein? Espagnol? Français? Non? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.